Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here live from Weather Trends 360 studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. thought we'd real, t- real quick talk about why I say the real Captain Kirk as opposed to that imposter on TV uh, who I loved as a kid growing up in Hawaii. Uh, and yes, we have his chair in our offices here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Actually, the real story is that, uh, again, I was a lieutenant and ultimately a captain in the Air Force uh, back in the day, some 30 years ago, dating myself. Uh, worked uh, briefly with this uh, pretty famous general here and uh, lots of other fascinating things uh, in my early career again very short career but uh, back in the late 80s 90s uh, involved with the Queen of England uh, knighting General Schwarzkopf at McDill Air Force Base, Space Shuttle Columbia's, lots of fighters F-16 missions and a couple wars unfortunately in there got Desert Storm and whatnot and then a hundred million dollar satellite uh, upgrade system at Offutt Air Force Base uh, SAC Command uh, in Nebraska uh, many many moons ago so again I always say I can uh, tell a lot of fascinating stories here, but then we all might have to go into the witness protection program if we talk too much about it. Uh, let's real quick jump back to the weather here. Uh, we'll recap January. Uh, overall, we'd say it was the slightly below average for the country as a whole, coldest in four years. Uh, polar vortex certainly had a big say in that uh, for the latter few weeks of January at least. Uh, uh, 14 coldest in 30 years nationally, 7th wettest in 30 years nationally, about 30% more than last year. That's the 11th snowiest in 30 years and about 25% uh, more snowfall than last year. Uh, looking at snow, it's actually pretty amazing. Some spots here in the east, I know we got um, a few deprived snow fans here in parts of the east coast, uh, Philly, New York, Boston, and Point South. But even in just our area here in uh, eastern PA, we can go from Atlantic City, where there's been about 10.9 inches of snow to date. Um, that's actually above average by just a tiny bit, but it's above average. So I know they're depressed down there, but um, again, you got to look at the averages here, and that's what it is. Go up the road, uh, up the turnpike, Newark, only 7.3 inches, which makes that the least in 11 years. Um, head out to the Poconos, again, about average, 24 inches, most in four years, and then head up the road to Binghamton, New York, 60.3 inches, and that's much above average. So, again, just across small geographies here, we have either some very happy snow fans or not so happy. Uh, I think we'll be adding to that eventually here. We think we're going to end up above average almost everywhere. It may not be an epic winter in uh, New York or Boston or Philly, but um, certainly probably going to squeak out an above average season here. Uh, if we look at uh, drought conditions, obviously, are polar opposite than last year because of all the rain and cold and snow. Um, so last year, pretty much uh, 30% of the country was in some sort of drought status, um, even a little more than that, to be honest. 12% drought status this year. So that's a kind of also a bellwether of our summer. When you go in with a really ample soil moistures, really hard to have a really hot start to summer at least. So at least through probably July, we're probably looking at a, kind of a coolish, stormy, uh, certainly a severe active weather uh, tornado thunderstorm season this uh, spring summer. But again, not looking for a major heat wave drought uh, type scenario for the eastern half of the country this summer. So get a little sneak peek beyond the next couple weeks. Uh, looking, the other factor here for the near term is the Great Lakes ice coverage uh, is the most in four years, about 7% above average. Uh, about 41% of the lakes are covered in ice as we speak. Lake Erie is almost completely covered in ice. If you've noticed here downwind of Lake Erie here in Pennsylvania, it's gotten a little sunnier as of late. Typically when the lake freezes over, we start to get some sunny days so you don't get that moisture off the lake once it's frozen um, so again pretty um, pretty icy out there on the Great Lakes uh, polar vortex certainly helped uh, increase that to be above average here if we look at um, the other factors just the ocean temperatures uh, we're in theory in a weak El Nino but it's acting anything at but uh, what we typically would expect um, you have a what's a SOI type index that's the atmospheric response to the El Nino and you're just not seeing it it comes and it goes and this week, for example, looks a lot more like a La Nina than, uh, than an El Nino, at least from the weather perspective. So again, uh, a lot of these oceanic cycles uh, haven't been awesome in terms of doing what they normally do. Um, and again, just because we're pretty much in a, a weakish El Nino uh, at best, uh, I'm probably going to stay through that through the, through the summer season. If we look at this week overall, we'd say it's a tad warmer than last year. Obviously in the east, it's very, very warm. Uh, we're getting a big, uh, there's a polar vortex lifted out. It's now shifted some of the cold back to the west, um, especially the Pacific Northwest, where they just have not had a lot of cold this winter. So very cold out there. Uh, overall, for the U.S., warmer than last year, but still about the 14th coldest. But again, two halves of hot and cold. Um, third wettest in 30 years. And that makes it similar to last year with that conveyor belt uh, from Texas to the interior northeast, and then very wet still in California in the west. Snowfall, we'd say, is uh, less than last year by about 21%, uh, 11th snowiest in 30 years. If we um, look at the six-day snowfall map here, we see a system uh, tracking through the, the northern plains, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, little hence system again on Thursday, and then Friday. 
Saturday. Again, heads back to northwest. We'll run through these one more time. So again, if you're on the Upper Plains, uh, I'm certainly going to be the snowy spot in the North Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin areas, uh, northern Michigan. And we see that second bigger system here midweek Thursday, uh, again, bringing a good swath of eight plus inches of snow to the Great Lakes. And then again, Friday. Next week, we'll have to watch the uh, the East Coast. Uh, again, there's some, some indications around 11th, 14th. Historically, those are very Valentine's Day, President's Day typically are very, very snowy periods. Uh, you can get some very big snowstorms in the east. Um, so don't lose faith here, folks, that uh, along the east coast, uh, this doesn't show much right now, but uh, interior northern New Jersey, Poconos, um, again, subject to change here, but uh, certainly a couple threats here as we get into next week. Looking at the um, next week overall for the U.S., the 11th through 17th February period, uh, coldest in four years. You see the erosion of that uh, big, huge warm spell this week uh, pushes down into the southeast. In fact, we think the northeast might be a little bit cooler than it's even depicted here. Some of the latest models um, are a little bit cooler than this. Um, overall, we'd say it's the coldest in four years, ninth coldest in 30 years. Um, very, very wet again, wettest in 30 years. Again, this is a, a tad more um, La Nina-ish to see the rainfall that far north as opposed to more in the Florida the deep south so again not really seeing that weak el nino response here at least uh, this week and next week um, next week would be the 11th snowiest in 30 years and i'd make the most in four years so we'll see if we can get to get finally get a, a big snowstorm here for the east coast um, as we get into the mid-february time frame looking at the season to date here uh, november again we started off frigid for the country uh, coldest in 18 years third colds in 30 years snowiest in 13 years december we had that mild big mild trend starting mid-month uh, so i made it the warmest in three years fourth warmest in 30 plus years. Again, January is the coldest in four, snowiest in five on the nation as a whole, and obviously the polar vortex invading toward the end of the month here. Uh, we actually think that may not be the last polar vortex. We think we're probably gonna get one more, again, in that typically favored time frame, which was that uh, mid to late February time frame is usually a very cold snowy period uh, under these normal cycle conditions. We would expect that, so we'll see if that'll pan out here. Um, so again, overall for February, we'd say the coldest and snowiest in four years. And then March, we think the spring pattern might break uh, probably around the 10th 11th ish somewhere in that time frame uh, so a warmer uh, much wetter less snowy march than last year uh, it's not going to be off the charts hot we do think the, the really really warm spring weather will break in april for sure so we've got a, a few three four more weeks here of uh, maybe up to five weeks of winter left and uh, hopefully we can get a squeak out a snowstorm here for the folks uh, that desperately need one in the east we have actually had a beautiful, uh, this is, watch this here at the end here, that goes from orange to pink, uh, purplish sunset here on Groundhog Day, which is actually stunning how the, watch the snow here in a second, turns to purple. Uh, so again, breathtaking view outside the offices here on the Groundhog Day. Uh, with that, folks, we hope you have a great week, and we will be back here this time next week.